Let's talk about how to be successful in AP Chem. Chances are you're already feeling cooked and school year, the school year hasn't even started yet. But you remember hearing horror stories um, from your teammate. You remember seeing kids crying in the hall. I promise it's not that bad, especially if you know what you're getting into walking in. And that's what this video is for. So I'm going to share all of my favorite survival tips, my favorite resources, and the topics you need to know to get ahead this year. So I'm Corinne of Chem with Corinne. You may have seen me embarrassing myself on social media. It's kind of what I do now. Um, I've worked with Chegg, Marco Learning, some really cool companies, just teaching chemistry to students around the world. So I was a classroom teacher. I had to give that up in 2021, take care of my family, hoping to go back sometime soon. But for now, I just love teaching chemistry. So I love helping as many students as I can. So I'm happy to make videos based on requests and DMs. I slowly get through those, but send your questions my way because this is what I love. Um, all right, so I don't also don't like to waste time. So if you've seen any of my quick tutorials, I'm going to fly through this because you don't have much time, so I don't want to waste it. So we're going to talk about the essential skills you'll need from Chem 1, and then I'll share all of my favorite survival tips along with my favorite resources. So let's look at those fundamental skills. These are the concepts you're going to see throughout the course. So if you have a good foundation with these, it's going to benefit you. So concept one, polyatomic ions and nomenclature start memorizing those now. If you don't have them down, I have a free set of flashcards linked to my bio. Check it out. Spend five minutes today. It's going to benefit you all year long. Um, concept two, periodic trends. Don't just know where the arrows go. Know what's actually going on, right? Know what happens as the atomic radius increases, how that impacts ionization energy, and how all of those are connected. You'll add some new periodic trends in, um, in AP Chem. Just focus on, I would say, the top four, right? Just stick with those, what you learned in Chem 1. Make sure you understand those well. Um, concept three is going to be intermolecular forces. Have a good understanding of what a hydrogen bond is um, versus a dipole-dipole interaction. Just understand the definitions. And then, as I said, you're going to build on that all year long. Um, concept four, the big one. This, is, this may have been the most tricky topic in Chem 1, but that's going to be stoichiometry. Spend some time now going over it because the second, third, or fourth time you go through stoichiometry, all of a sudden it will start to click, and that's really going to help you out. Um, and the cool thing about these, just these simple things, skills is that they keep showing up on the AP exam. So spending some time now, um, really getting that solid foundation is going to benefit you. I promise. Um, there's a trend in the AP exam. It seems to get a little bit easier every year, knock on wood. Um, but the hope is that that's going to continue, right? So in that case, if you know these topics from Chem 1, it's really going to help you out. So bonding and nomenclature, be able to write the names and chemical formulas of both ionic and covalent formulas. So I, that means know the nuances of transition metals, know that you only use those prefixes for covalent compounds only, and memorize those polyatomic ions. Know that phosphate is PO4 with a charge of three minus. Spend five to 10 minutes memorizing those now and it will benefit you all year long. The other big um, topic to review, it's gonna be molecular geometry, polarity, and IMF. Really that's three topics I just kind of strung together, but it's because they're all connected. So start with Lewis dot diagrams. Make sure you can draw Lewis dot diagrams for everything, even, even double and triple bonds, because you're then going to use those to predict the molecular geometry, which you then use to predict polarity and identify the intermolecular forces. So unit three is a big one in AP chemistry, and that's where you will see all of these things along with gases. Um, reason it's big is because it's 22% of the AP exam. And again, it's because it connects into everything. So just have a good foundation with this and you will you will do well this year. Um, all right, other topics to know. Chemical reactions. This should be like an easier one, right? Feel confident writing, balancing, and classifying those chemical reactions. Predict the products and then write the chemical formulas of the ionic compounds formed. Um, feel really good about that. And then that's going to connect into stoichiometry. Start with the mole conversions. Use just the mole ratios, right? Using those coefficients from the balanced equation, which you can then use to predict theoretical yields or identify limiting reactants. Um, other topics that you're going to see, unit one is going to cover everything from the electron to the mole. So no periodic trends, electron configuration, and empirical molecular formulas. You will see all of this. Um, and some of the one thing that intimidates students about AP chemistry is that a lot of times you're going to walk in on week one and boom, you have a test on everything that you covered in Chem 1. So maybe you took it as a sophomore and as a sophomore, you weren't paying attention, right? You didn't even know how to study back then. So it's okay if you've forgotten a lot of this. Um, 
but spend some time now going through it and that's going to benefit you um, tremendously. So if you would like some more help with this, I do have a quick Chem2 bootcamp course. It's just like an online review course that I put together with you in mind so that if you are looking for just a little refresher from Chem1 or Honors Chem, um, this is what you need. So it's just five quick modules where there are short lectures, quick videos shorter than this, um, where I just review the concepts, practice, and then assessments. And you are not forced to go in a certain order. You're not forced to complete the practice use it um, and complete what you need to to feel good walking into this class and it ends with an escape room so if you look at it and you're like ah oh, i got all this down try out the escape room and kind of see where you stand walking in so you can go to my website chemwithgrin.com um, to access that all right so next up tips and tricks these are all going to be very straightforward the small things make a big difference in this course. So tip one is going to be take your own notes in class. Don't just ask your friend if you can screenshot their notes. Actually, you move that pencil on your paper and get some muscle memory in there. Um, it's going to be really beneficial because then when you revisit your notes, because that's your, the other thing you're going to do with these notes, you're not just going to shove them in the bottom of your backpack. You're actually going to look at them again. You're going to doodle on them. You're going to circle things. You're going to draw question marks next to them. And if you're just doing that with your buddy's notes, you're not going to know what, what they have written on the page. So take the time to do that. It's going to help you focus in class um, and you're just going to get more out of the class. All right, tip two, stay organized. Because again, like I said, this is going to be a cumulative class. So at, in May, you're going to be tested on stuff that you covered uh, next week. So make sure you are staying organized. You're keeping all of that. You're keeping all of your quizzes, your practice, your labs, because you will see them again. Um, tip three, familiarize yourself with all the tools you're going to have access to, whether you're taking the AP exam or not. You want to feel really good about finding everything on the periodic table and then using College Board's equation sheet. So I always keep a laminated copy of both so I can easily refer to it. And that's because time is money, especially when it comes to this course and this exam. The hardest part of taking AP chemistry is you're trying to squeeze an entire two semesters of a college course into a high school um, high school course. So in college and undergrad, you'd be taking Gen Chem 1, Gen Chem 2, that's six hours of, of coursework in addition to a lab. Um, and you're trying to do that all in one class. So you are going to be moving at breakneck speed through this course um, and anywhere where you can save time is going to be valuable. All right, tip four complete those practice problems. So the more active practice you can get, um, the more prepared you will be for this course, for the assessments, and for the AP exam. That's like my top question that I get asked. How do I study for AP chemistry? You complete practice problems. And there are so many great resources out there that are completely free. College Board has released all of the FRQs from the last couple of decades, along with the scoring guides. So you can sit down, time yourself, um, take those FRQs, and then see how you did. And then if you are like, oh man, I really need to practice with acid-based chemistry. Yeah, everyone needs to practice with weak acid titration. That's normal. Um, just do a quick Google search, weak acid titration AP Chem FRQ, and you will find a list of um, those questions. Take advantage of all of those online resources that are out there because they're there to benefit you. All right have a couple more tips. And I think I just talked about my last tip. Yeah. All right. Anyway, tip five, ask questions, ask questions before, during, and after class. Many of us have been doing this for a long time. So it, you know, we're not going to think to stop and slow down and, and explain certain things. The more questions you ask, the better the experience is going to be for everyone in your class. Um, so make sure you are doing that. And then tip six is sometimes your teacher is not going to be accessible, right? You, if you're studying at 10, 10 o'clock at night, I will still be up because that's my life, but not everyone is. Your best friend who's also taking AP Chem is totally going to be up. Um, so make sure you have a good study group. And I shouldn't have said best friend because your study group shouldn't necessarily be your best friend. Maybe your BFF is taking AP Chem because they're like, I just want to blow stuff up, right? Not the right person to, to work with. You want to find someone who has similar goals. Um, and make sure that you guys are working together now. And just working together is great, but also commiserating um, over the struggle that is AP Chem is also valuable. So keep that in mind. So this is these are just all of those tips. Again, I think another thing to recognize is walking in, you're not going to know everything in this course. And I think for a lot of us, that 
like recognizing that fact is a little intimidating. Um, but just knowing that you're not going to know everything, at least definitely not in September. Um, you might not even know everything for the exam, but keep in mind, you need like a 75% to get a five on the ex- exam. You don't need to know everything. It might pain you, but it's going to help you out because it's better to learn this lesson now than your first year in undergrad. All right. So my favorite resources. These are all of the free ones out there um, that I loved. A lot of these you've probably seen. Jeremy Krug's YouTube channel, that's relatively new and it is incredible. It is such a good resource. Uh, Follow him now. Um, I would love to create more content like this. I just have limited time. So my goal is to at least hit the most tricky topics um, this year and I'll be putting those out there. But follow him now. Um, Michael Farabell was my mentor teacher back in the day when I decided to switch careers to become a teacher. Um, So I'm a huge advocate for his resources as well. All very straightforward. He'll give you a problem set and he will go through every single step of that problem. So if that is how you learn, it's a really valuable resource. Um, As I said, I have tons of Quizlet flashcard sets. Knowing the vocab um, is going to help you with all those FRQs and it's going to help you decipher some of the word problems in AP Chem. So take some time going through those as well. I have those broken down into different topics like the polyatomic ions, the weird elements that don't match with their symbols, and then there's a flashcard set for each unit of the course. Um, and then here are my favorite TikTok accounts. So you can follow my, my TikTok account. I'm mostly making jokes on there because I think we need that. Um, And then I also release just quick tutorials, one to two minute videos where I'm either going through a problem um, or answering a question. So leave comments, send me messages, and I will make videos to respond to those because again, my goal is just to help you out. So uh, let's see. Yeah. So as I just said, please leave questions on this video. Anything that I missed or did not cover. Um, Some of the questions that I got in my inbox today were things like, what is the best way to prep for this class? Again, I I really, I do think reviewing some of those concepts from Chem 1 is going to be, it's just really valuable, especially if you don't have a summer assignment. Um, If you want to work with a tutor, if you want to just do some practice, any of those are going to be really valuable. Best way to prep for the exam, practice problems. Um, Again, it's a math-based course. That was another question I got in my inbox today. Is there a lot of math? Yeah, absolutely. But that's why I love it. And hopefully you do too. And that's why you're in AP Chem. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. Follow me for more content like this. Again, I am always looking for requests and looking for new videos. Best of luck.